All right, good morning. How is everybody this morning? <laughs> Are we awake yet? No. Good. Uh, I want to welcome you to the InfoCon this year. I am Amy Farley. I'm a technical account manager with Red Hat. Um, I specialize in security things. I like identity management. I uh, enjoy InfoSec things, and I've been a member of the uh, ISSA group here even before I started working at uh, Red Hat. Before that, I was a teacher. Um, we've been talking about some of my, my classes and things like that, but it's something that has helped me to be able to do what I do. So a little bit about me. Uh, if you see, I have an IRC NIC. If you know anything about Red Hat, we live in our IRC client. Um, we talk with people, with other associates all over the world. And on Freenode, I am Amy Ra. Um, at work, I'm also Amy Ra, and all my friends live in IRC, so I'm just a geek like you guys. I've had a love-hate relationship with tech from an early age. I was the daughter of an IBM uh, CE. Uh, my first computer was a PC Junior in 1980. Um, and I swore, I swore I was never, ever, ever, ever going to do anything with computers. That didn't work. <laughs> so you also like to eat, and that's what pays these days. Um, I am a geek nerd. I like InfoSec. Uh, I am just as paranoid as you are. Um, that's what we do. That's how we stay safe. I am, I've also found out that I'm a really good test monkey for anything related to customer experience. When I've been building my lab environments and trying to set things up and I follow documents, I will run across every single error that the users run into as well. Either from, oh, I know how to do this, I skipped this part on reading it and I missed that one command you're supposed to do before the rest, to, to, to other things where the documentation just isn't, isn't quite clear. So keep that in mind. There are good test monkeys for customer experience versus people that have been doing this forever. That's, they may not always come across the same things that, that your customers do. And my other superpower is I know how to make really smart people talk to each other. So I take smart people with questions, and I find smart people with answers. And hopefully it's the right answer to the right question, but I put them together. So, and by then, and by doing that, I learn things. So the goal of this presentation, this is a um, presentation with demos. I'm going to demonstrate the Open SCAP or Open SCAP workbench, so SCAP workbench. I'm also going to show how it integrates with Red Hat's product. It's their uh, package management system called Satellite, so that you can check to see if your systems are compliant. And if they are not compliant, so you can generate mitigation scripts to be able to run on your machines to make them compliant. Um, these tailoring files come in three different formats. They are Bash, Ansible, or Puppet. You can run them that way. You can also take the tailoring files that the SCAP workbench will create, put them in Satellite, and then run the, have Satellite run it for you. So it's good to see these two work together. So I'll be able to show you that. It also will create reports so that you can show reporting to the ones that like fancy reports with pretty graphs and the lots, lots of paragraphs. So that, that meet, meets that checkbox. And there are also some customization options that you can do. You can customize your frameworks. So if you want to stig a box, but you don't want all of the stig, there are certain things you have to change you can actually customize the framework that's being run against your boxes so that you can make, the, make those changes and have it work for your environment. And then uh, how many of you guys go and you have to attend CVE calls where you have to go through all the CVEs and figure out which machines haven't been patched yet? Okay. Satellite is really good to show you where your systems are and how they compare to the errata. And if you have compliance policies enabled inside satellite, it can tell you which boxes are compliant, which ones aren't, and where they fail. Okay. So I'm going to be able to show all of that to you, provided the demo gods smile on me today and everything stays up. But everything was up just a little bit ago, so fingers crossed. All right, so why, why do we care about all this? Most of you have people that are over you that are concerned about security, right? So we don't want to be in the news. We don't want to have to spend lots of money because we got 
we got uh, attacked. Um, my security off officer keeps talking about a STEG or something, or FISMA, or NIST, or the other alphabet soup of frameworks. FedRAMP now, I think, is the current one, right? All these different frameworks, so many things. Do you know which ones, which ones are which, and do you know what they require? Uh, you might have a development manager that wants root and they want it now. They have to be able to install the packages or create things from source and put it on your system so they can do their stuff, right? Yeah. And they want to do install everything. They want to be able to control it all. Do you let them have root? Maybe. Maybe we can just give you some pseudo rights to specific things you need. And then you have an operations manager, you know. Does your security officer annoy you? <laughs> yes. Um, and then you want to know how to make them go away, or at least how not to be so, so angry with you, right? So then we're going to talk about these things. These tools hopefully will help address some of these concerns. So in our security and compliance manage management, we're going to talk about OpenSCAP. And I'm going to demonstrate that after I show you some of the things that it can do via slides. So it's NIST validated, and it's certified security content automation protocol. So it's the SCAP scanner. Um, it's by Red Hat. You scan systems and containers for known vulnerabilities, unpatched software compliance with security policies, FISMA, FedRAMP, NIST, STIG. You can do baselines. You can create your own. It will also generate those mitigation, those tailoring files. So that could be Ansible. It could be Bash. It could be Puppet. Okay, And it's included in the RHEL-based repository. So it, by itself, if you have RHEL, you can use it. If you have access, it is also available for other operating systems. Um, you can have it for Fedora. You can have it for CentOS. You could, they even have forms upstream. So this is, you know, it doesn't have to come from Red Hat for, this, for the SCAP work, workbench. It can fit whatever your, your environment needs to be. Okay. <clears throat> but Red Hat natively ships the NIST validated checklist content, the OVAL files, the XML files, so this is going to be running the scans against. <clears throat> and it has a GUI front end tool. You can also run it via command line if you like that better. I will show you the GUI <laughs> today. Okay? Um, but for the SCAP workbench, it's very good at doing a single machine. You tell it where to do, it can either do it locally or you can do it via SSH and have it log in to the system and run the scan. And I will show you that in just a minute. But it provides a tailoring functionality for that SCAP content so that you can, once it's been run, you know what's wrong with it. You can take that tailoring file, look through to see what it's going to do, make any changes you want, and then mitigate the box. All right, so this is what it looks like. Um, they should give access to these slides. Um, I have them both as links in the slide deck, but I also have reference to the URLs at the end, so that you'll be able to get it. But you can go out and pull it down. It runs on a network-connected server. It can scan locally or via SSH. It creates those files. As you run the scan, you can tell it to go ahead and mitigate everything as it goes, or you can have it do it later, and it will also generate reports. And there's documentation link there as well. All right, I'm going to pause for just a second, and I'm going to kick off a build of a VM here in just a minute, and then I'll come back around. So hold on just a second. I had this all one screen before. Can you guys tell me? Here, give me just one second. I can't, I can't do this this way. All right, can you guys see? All right. So this is my satellite. Can you guys hear me right now? Okay. This is my satellite. I am creating a new host, and I'm going to kick off the build. Let me just make sure everything is how I set it. Make sure that we can 
resolve it. All right. So I'm going to click submit, and it's going to build a machine in my lab environment here. Okay, so it is opening and starting one, there it is. So let me open that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so while that's doing, this is installing while we're going to be talking. Awesome. Okay. Because I wanted to have a box that hadn't been scanned um, by the satellite available, so it's going to be building while we're talking. <clears throat> All right. The way that the SCAP scanner works, you take the SCAP workbench, you insert the SCAP content, there are files that you can import into it, and it's going to take that SCAP content and it's going to run it against the box that you tell it to. So you're going to take and put it against your VM, it's going to run the scan, compare it to the SCAP content, how it, how it applies, and then it's going to give you a SCAP report. So it's a nice report format, and I'll show you that once we get that done. And you can run this everywhere. Anywhere that you can network access your machines, you can scan your environment. So if you have uh, DMZ, if you put a box in there with the SCAP workbench, you can do that that way. If you have satellite, it does the SCAP scanning. It's just, uh, it's better to use the SCAP workbench to make the mitigation files at this point. But you can take, take your compliance requirements, find your frameworks, you can make it so that it works with your provisioning, so satellite can kick out your boxes that are already compliant. Um, you can automate to make sure that these get pushed out every time you build. Yep. Um, when you install it, there's a package that has the SCAP content. There's extra SCAP content that's upstream that you can get from the, the SCAP project. Okay. It's reusable. The Ansible files that you create you can use on any box that, that, that it would apply to. It will work across migrations and it's very integrated. We have a good integration between satellite and OpenSCAP. So we recommend using them together. On RHEL, you can have the SCAP workbench. If you use satellite, this does your groups of systems. You can delegate the scanning to where it runs on a cron job. Satellite manages that job. So it'll, it'll check them. You can do daily, hourly, monthly, whatever works for you. And then you can use integration satellite has now with 6.4 has good integration with Ansible Tower and with Ansible in general. So it will run and you can either do your management via Puppet or you can manage it with the Ansible playbook. Okay. And when it comes to vulnerability management, you can do that with satellite. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to show that as well today. So why? <laughs> All right, here's an opportunity to, to, to earn swag. Do you know what these uh, security vulnerability icons are? Well, okay, one is shell shock. Who said shell shock? All right, would you like a t-shirt or socks? Or it's a long sleeve satellite shirt. Shirt? Let's see, uh, I don't know if I can do that. It's a shirt, I can't throw that far. All right, there you go. All right, the other one in the middle? Heart bleed. I heard that generally over here. I have lots of things to hand out, so everybody will get something. All right, I think I, think I heard you say heart bleed. Yeah. There you go. And last one, what is it? Poodle, yep. And you can't have a vulnerability if you don't have a cool name, right? All right. So why were these why were these in the news? Because somebody came up with a cool icon name and it was a vulnerability, right? But these are pretty serious, right? That's the idea. So why do we worry about that? Why do we care? Because this is how we end up on the news and have to pay lots of money. We want to ha not have these happen. Okay. Um, 99% of the vulnerabilities exploited will continue to be ones known by security and IT professionals at the time of the incident. You may know about these CVEs. They may not make it into the news right away. They really make it into the news when your name does, right? So it's important to make sure you know that your systems are patched, they're secure. How many of you guys run uh, 
Qualis or Nessus scans. Okay, how many of you have false positives from Qualis? Because of Red Hat's way of packaging, right? <laughs> The way that we do backporting, we don't change the versions the way Qualys necessarily wants us to. Ours are secure, but Qualys doesn't know that. The good thing about satellite looking at things, it knows how we fit. It can also tell you which CVs have been patched for and which haven't. And the importance is you need to keep your system safe. You can only do so much with your biggest, weakest link, which is your people, right? You can only do so much with them. That's training, education, limiting their access, things like that. You can do so much with your systems, right? You have your firewalls, you have your firewall rules, you have your ability to tie things down, but how do you know the state of your systems currently? Do you know if they're vulnerable? Do you know if they've been patched? Do you know if everything is reporting in? And that's for satellite where that comes in. So satellite is our configuration management system. I'll show you what it is when I get to the demo in just a second, but it can be used for provisioning, configuration, package updates, security errata, any sort of software management is also in charge of your subscription management. If you have systems that are in the DMZ, satellite can, via a capsule, push out updates to that so you're able to not have to sneaker net it in, but through firewall containment, you can update your systems and make sure that everything is patched. And you can also automate it. So this is what the, the, when you log in, you're going to see your content hosts. And when I bring this up, you'll see this. I will have it zoomed up a little bit more for you, but I wanted to show you a little bit. You have three different systems here. They tells you what your operating system is, what its puppet environment is, and it tells you, if you see those little red circles, that there's something wrong, okay? You don't know what that is until you go and check out the machine. On this machine, if we look at it, we've got, uh, we've got a status of error. The error is it is not in compliance. And it tells you that there are security errata applicable. In this case, I built these machines off of the Kickstart from a really old version, like a 7.3 version, and we're on 7.5. So I know there's a lot of security errata, and errata in general, that haven't been applied. And that's what it's telling me. Okay, And if you want to see what errata is available, you can go to that. You can also sort your errata by what you care about. So I need to see all the critical security CVEs, see what's available. It shows it to you. It also provides the link to the, to the information about it. Okay, And you can, once you identify that, you can also tell it to push the errata change. So you can tell it how you want it done via Catello, which is the satellite doing and pushing it out. You can do it via remote execution, or you can customize it first. So those are things that can be done to help you manage your systems a little bit better. All right, so now the fun stuff. Now the demo. All right. All right, so let's see. Let's see how our build is. You can still hear me, right? Okay. So we've got our SCAP workbench here. And you can load, here, I'll bring this back up actually. Close up. Close. Come on. Oh, somebody opened the customization on me. That's why I won't close. Okay. There we go. How many times did we open it? There we go. Okay, scalp workbench right there. So when it comes up, it has all sorts of content. It can be for container platform. This is for uh, OpenShift platform for RHEL 7, RHEL 6, RHEL 7, regular. You have CentOS, Chromium, Fedora, uh, JRE, OpenSUSE, you've got some Solaris in here, uh, Ubuntu's, and then you can even import your own SCAP content. So you have a lot of options. I'm going to pull up my one for RHEL 7, and I'm going to tell it to load the content. And let's see. Yeah, it won't make any bigger. Okay. So I'm going to choose the profile I want it to run. So I have 
C2 rest for rel 7 got criminal justice sieges policies let's find let's see we'll pick the oh where's the government baseline here we'll do a nist one pull that one and i'm going to tell it where i want it to where i want it to do it so let me see if this is built if not i will run it on one of my others so are we done it's still finishing so we will do this one on one of the ones I've built. So let's see. Who do I want? Awesome. Here. Let's pick this one. And what is our IP? Our IP is 80. Okay. So I'm going to SSH in. Dot zero dot eighty. All right, and I am going to tell it to fetch the remote resources. I don't want it to remediate yet, so I'm just going to scan it and kick that off. Yes. All right, and it is scanning. As it gets done, you'll see the things that it passes, you'll see the things that are failing, okay? And that's as it's going. If I had told it to remediate as it went, after it finished the scan, you'd see it go back and saying fixed, okay? But right now, I just want it to scan it. So while that's scanning, see if that's caught up with me yet? Okay, so while this is scanning, What, let me t pause for a minute, and what questions do you have for me right now? What do you want to see? What, what, what interests you so far? I hear you talking, Lynn, what are you You can use command line, and I will show you, um, on the mitigation file, it'll tell you some of the commands. Just for me to demonstrate, it's easier for me to do via yeah, GUI. It, it, it's not, it's, you have to do that too. I mean, it's not because somebody's got to want to do it. Yeah. Right. But you can also um, tell it to run the profile. And there's, if you have profiles set up in satellite, you can actually kick it off too just by telling uh, Puppet to, to, to start it as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, it will create a report, and once this is done, I'll show you what the report looks like. Um, I'll also create a tailoring file from that report so that you can see what that looks like as well. That would probably be more in the satellite, and I'll show you what it shows, but it can pull up the reports. It'll also give you like a dashboard to show how it's doing. Hopefully, though, once it scans it, it will tell you that it's not in compliance, you fix it, and then you just have a, have different profiles you want it to meet for that. So do you want to, do you want a koozie? You don't care? Oh. I have other swag I'll give away. All right, and you had a question? Uh, or? Uh, Define difficult. Uh, high side, low side. High side, low side. So as long as you can have a SCAP scanner or a capsule in your DMZ, are they connected to each other or are you sneaker netting? Yep. So you're sneaker netting. So you can take the SCAP workbench and put it in on your system if you want to do the local. So that's possible. Um, if are the sneaker do, in the sneaker netting, are they connected to each other at all? Yep. Okay. So they talk to each other. So have one machine in there that has the SCAP workbench. And then you may need to do it machine by machine there. We usually suggest, and we have it set up with some of our, um, our government customers, our federal customers, to where they have capsules that are disconnected to the internet, but they, they are able to 
upload via CD, DVD, their repos and do this kind of scanning that way. So it is possible to do that if you have a disconnected satellite in that environment um, to where it can, you can have the scans run, you can generate the files, you can do the remediation. Right. Hold on. Oh, the swag I can give away. Okay. I will open this up once you guys get, once we get done. Okay. So it looks like it is done. Okay. Let's look at the report. Let's make this readable. Okay, so you can see, actually, let's do this way. You can see that it has what profile it's been run against, tells you about SCAP Security Guide Project, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what you care about though is down here. You see the rule results, okay? You see that this target system didn't satisfy 182 rules, okay? So 178 passed, 182 failed. It also will break it out by severity for those that are concerned about how important the ones that you failed are. Um, you've got 33 other, eight low, 130 medium, medium, and 11 high. It will tell you the score, okay? If we had told it to remediate, it would have fixed them as it went. Um, you can change the grouping but this is something that you can provide to upper levels that need this nice pretty report so that they can see where it's going and how it's working. And then it will go down and show you exactly which things did not pass or which things did pass. So it will break out the things that you failed and say what you didn't have. So you've got to fix all these things in red. All right, let me step out a minute and we'll talk about what's here. All right, so, yes? This is what's actually described in the framework. So these are their XML rules. So if you have the STIG, it says, you have to, you know, make sure SE Linux is enforcing. You can't have, um, there's some of the others. I don't roll them off though. Pat 15 character passwords. Some people want to customize that, right? Because you don't necessarily want 15, so you get the exception. You can actually customize your framework that it's running against to not check that if you need that, or to make it a different requirement. Some people want more. Somebody asked me what the maximum number, and I think they wanted like 130 characters. Yeah. I don't want to try to remember that. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. And the good thing about some of the upstream content is all those frameworks are there. As long as they have OVO files or XML files, you just pull them in and you run with it. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you want to customize the framework check, what you can do, there's a button up here to click customize, and then you take out the things you don't want, okay? So if you know you don't want it to, there's something your environment can't do, doesn't do, you take that off, and then you run it, and you save it so that you have it anytime, so you don't have to make the change every time. Okay, is there a question in the back? Yes, it, when you fail the test, it will tell you to fix it. And that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to bring up, it creates a script that's called a tailoring file. And you run that, it's either a bash script, puppet module, or a uh, Ansible playbook. I like Ansible because it reads in English. Um, but you can run that and it will actually go and fix it. And if I had checked remediate on the scan, it would have gone ahead and created that tailoring file and then gone and fixed it as it, as it went. So let me show you that. Okay, so we've got here, okay. If you see down the bottom, and I wish I could increase the size here, I can say generate remediation rule, okay. If I choose either Bash, Ansible, or Puppet, let's choose Ansible. All right, and this is going to be NIST. It's going to save it as a YAML file. So let's click Save. Come on. 
All right. You can also save your results out as well. So let's see if I can bring up what I just saved. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right, so this is, let's see if I can make this bigger. Do, do, do. I, there should be a way to zoom it. Come here. Nope, that's making a new one. Zoom, darn you. Let's see, view. No. Oh well. Oh well, let's see what we can read. All right. This is all the text, I'm sorry. But I will point something out here. If you look here, in this part, it tells you how the file was generated and then how to apply the, re the remediation. It will give you the command that it runs to generate this file. Um, and these are also similar to the commands that you would run if you wanted to do this via CLI. So if you don't want to use the GUI and you want to use command line, you can use command line tools to do it. But if you look here, this is, this is the remediation file. So it's going to tell you on the host, if you import it into satellite, it says host all here. Satellite will take that and put it to your specific hosts that need it. And it will go through and mitigate all the errors that it found that it can. There are some things that may need input from you for how you need to configure that to work correctly for your environment. Um, if you are trying to use smart cards, you have to make sure that you provide your root CA, all your CA certs have that available to it, but it will do everything else. It'll, it'll do the mitigation for you. And it creates a nice YAML file so that you can kick it off. If you have tower, you can use that. If you just, Ansible can run out of, off of Ansible Engine, you can do it that way. If you like Puppet or Bash, you can run it that way as well. Okay. What's up? This, let me see if I can get it into a different, different medium, and then I think I can make it larger. Okay. And I'm assuming scalable on the type, not scalable on how many systems, right? Can you schedule it? Yes, satellite will do the scheduling. I'm going to show that in just a second. Let me bring up my satellite. All right. So that is here. So you can schedule it. I have in here, let's see, content. This is the default content that's in here, but that's not what I'm looking for. Let me find this. And I want policies. Okay, so I have in here, for one of my host groups, I have a compliance policy called STIG. This is for the uh, RHEL 7 STIG. Okay, it'll tell you how many hosts I have that are not compliant. It'll tell you that I have a host that's never been audited. That's the one I just built. This, when I created it, was uh, created to run monthly. But you can schedule it. So let's go back to here and let's make a let's make a new one. So when you make a compliance policy, and can you see that? Let's call this one six nist. Okay. This is going to use the the, actually, I think I'll make it STIG because I know that one's in here, the six STIG framework. Okay. This is what I'm going to set up to run on my RHEL 6 boxes. So I'm going to choose what SCAP content I want. And I want RHEL 6. What profile do I want? We want the DISA STIG. And if I want it to have a tailoring file, I can include it here or I can put it back in later. So if I want it to mitigate as it finds it, I would have a tailoring file ready and I would import it here. I don't have one for six right now, so let's move that over here. So when do we want it? Do you want weekly, monthly, custom? What do you want? 
let's choose weekly. What weekday do you want it? Do you want it to run Sunday so you have a report on Monday? You can do that. Okay, and I make sure it's for my lab environment, so my KVM. And this satellite will also manage multiple cloud environments, so if you have things that are bare metal as well as uh, on VMware or whatever your hypervisors are, or if you have stuff in AWS, it can know your different compute resources, and it can both provision and also monitor in each place. All right, as for that org, you can also manage multiple orgs as well. What was that last question? Yes. So you can, uh, depending on your cloud environment, uh, I know with Azure you have to upload certain templates, things like that. For AWS, if you want to deploy out there, you can have templates ready to go, and you can do that as well. So this is going to belong to a host group that is my RHEL 6 environment. So anybody that's in this host group, and I can choose multiple host groups, will be monitored according to this framework. And when I tell it to submit, it will go through, and on it, on the set basis that I that I set up, it's going to run that scan, and it's going to scan all those boxes. And then when I come in, I will have my reports. So if I go and I look at the boxes that I have, okay, you'll see that I have four different VMs, right? And I can check to see how they follow. So, so all this is being interactive with SSH? Uh, SSH, yes, and um, in satellite there are different Catello agents and um, Puppet if you, if you want it to be. If you want to do any remote execution, you want that, okay? But you can look at what's available, you can look at your compliance. Okay, and it shows 60% failed. If I want to go back and look at errata, I can do that. Let's see. So there's security errata available. Where is my errata? Do, 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 do. Do. Let me find another host I know has it. Up where I can find it. Mm-hmm. Yep, we have... Um, Mm -hmm. Yep, I know of um, several of our federal customers that have this disconnected satellite. So what they have is they've uploaded their package repos and all that content into it, that disconnected environment, and it manages everything inside, and it's able to, to report back. All right, so I need to find my content. There we go. And I can check my errata. All right, and this tells me what all is available. And being as this is 7.3, it's quite old, but then I can also check. So if you want to look at CVEs, you can do CVEs that equal, or we can, actually I like to do security level because I can then tell it. Security equals what? Let's see. Come on. Come on, give me the thing. All right, security equals, we can do security type. Operators, we can do equals, okay, fine. You did this better for me earlier, so the demo god's coming in here. Yeah. Severity, thank you. And yes, I hit caps lock. Equals, there we go. Critical. Yep. <laughs> All right. So right now I only have three criticals. The DNS mask, the NSS and NS NSS util security update, and the DHCP security update. I can tell it to go through, and I want to use Catella agent to fix that. So it's going to apply those errata to that box. Yes? Is there any way to integrate with your change management system? It depends on which change management system you're using. Do you know what you're using? 
Remedy? Okay. I don't know. I can find out because I'm not sure how well it works outside of the Red Hat house. That's where, that's what I know. Um, it will, yeah, it, it, it is able to do the uh, API calls. So if you can pull in the correct APIs, you can remote execute that way, um, especially via, via satellite. Okay. Sorry, what's that? Yes, and in fact, in satellite, you can set up multiple subnets um, and host groups so that you can manage it that way. So it, you, you can specify your subnet groups and only apply patches to, to, to certain areas. You also have lifecycle environments, so you can have dev, dev test and prod so that you can do your different groups at different times because nobody likes to, t you know, we want to test it to see how it goes in dev and test before we put it in production. That's the way it's supposed to go, right? But you never fully test till you test in prod, right? Was that? Same thing with ServiceNow through, through API calls probably. Um, it just depends on what, how you're going to create the, AP, the uh, API call. But we have API guides that we can, that you can look up and, and make it work. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any other questions for me? <laughs> How much overlap is there between the frameworks? Uh, sometimes a lot. Enormous. Um, because it's a sliding scale of security, so it's kind of you have a baseline that is moderately secure, and then you add on top of it. So if you have an environment that you know needs a particular set of security, anybody that's a, a federal box has to be compliant with the STIG. That's what the federal demands. And if you're not, then you have to have permission to be out of compliance. Um, if you are not a federal entity, you want to have a certain amount of security, but you may not want quite that, that much. That's why they offer the different frameworks. So that's why they give you the NIST framework. Depending on what your um, security compliance auditors want, they are probably going to go with NIST. So if you're not sure, choose NIST, because that's the one that everything else is kind of based off of. Does that make sense? A lot of the overlap also is just how they word it. Yes. So everyone has to have their own framework, so they still put to be secure and they're reworded. And they tend to, with because the frameworks are highly complex, and the people that are in charge of the upper management and dictating that things have to be compliant may not know what all the components are they want a particular framework. It may be equivalent to a different framework, but they don't know. They only know what they've heard, that kind of thing. I get that question a lot because there was a um, OMB memo that came out saying what kind of security compliance the federal government wanted. So I will get lots of questions about that. You know, is it compliant with OMB memo blah number? And I'm like, I have never heard of that in my life. And basically what that equivalent is, is FISMA, which is based on NIST and some extra stuff. So, so it's, it's, it's deciphering the uh, alphabet soup that is security. So, yes? Yes. Yep. As long as you can get access it via, via SSH, um, you can do that. As long as your box with the, uh, the SCAP work bunch is able to access that subnet through that jump in, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else? Yes. Right. There are, on the SCAP workbench, there's all that content for those other boxes. For satellite, satellite can manage outside of Red Hat. Um, you can have repos, things like that. As long as you have the tailoring files that SCAP Workbench will generate, and it's generated correctly for that environment, it should be able to push it out. What's that? There's a difference between can I do it and is it fully supported? 
Okay? Um, we support everything Red Hat. Do I know people that are doing outside repositories in there? Yes, and Satellite can do it. Do I support making them work? No. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> I can tell you maybe why it's failing, but I can't make anything outside of Red Hat work correctly. Now, that's, that's just the way, way it works. But can it be done? Yes, I've seen it done. Sometimes, you know, is it something I'm going to help you fix to make it work? I'll point you to where I know there's documentation and say, good luck. Okay? But anything within Red Hat, that's, that, that's what I support. Okay? Yes? Yes, it just has to have the um, ability to do it. So when I SSH, SSH'd in as root at blah, it just has to have enough permissions to be able to make all the changes it needs to. So if you're doing the mitigation, Huh? Yeah, it has to be. Other than root. You can. Um, that would be something where I would change the tailoring file and have it become user in uh, Ansible and then do it that way. So you don't have to be able to SSH in as root because sometimes you can't. But that would take a little bit of customization on the tailoring file to be able to do that. But, but it's doable. Is that something you can do in the back end so that every time we generate a file, we'll add that on top? Haven't looked. Don't know. Can find out, though. I wouldn't see why you couldn't. Um, but it may be in the back end of SCAP that you may not want to work with. So, But if you know that it's just this one chunk of YAML, you just run that run that call first and have it have it run the rest. Okay. All right, I wanted to thank everybody. Please come up here and take some, take some swag. There are stickers, there are things. Um, if, does anybody want a nice, a nice mug? It's a mug with stickers. You want a mug with stickers? You'll take a mug with stickers. No one else takes All right. Yes, sir. Oh, you wanted the mug? Well, come up here. I've got, I've got other things. So thank you all for, for coming. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thank you.